Hello everyone. Welcome to this dissection video of the brachial fluxus. I am sure this video will be very helpful for many of you who are dissecting the brachial fluxus or who are preparing for their practical exams and want to revise this topic in short period. At the end of this video, I have included the easy way to draw the diagram of the brachial fluxus along with the important viva questions. So watch this video till the end and let's begin. Brachial fluxus is the fluxus or network of the nerves that supplies the upper limb. Coming to the formation of brachial fluxus, it is formed by ventral rami of lower four cervical nerves and the first thoracic nerve. To have the clear idea of the sentence, let's have a view on the structure of the typical spinal nerve. Here is the typical spinal nerve which is formed by the union of the ventral root and the dorsal root. This spinal nerve divides into the ventral ramus which runs anteriorly and dorsal ramus which runs posteriorly. Ventral rami of C5 to T1 spinal nerves contribute in the formation of the brachial fluxus. Thus, C5 to T1 spinal nerves they form the brachial fluxus. There is a little contribution from the C4 and T2 spinal nerves. Depending on the contribution from C4 and T2 spinal nerves, there are two types of the brachial fluxus. If the contribution from the C4 spinal nerve is large and that from the T2 spinal nerve is absent, it is called prefix type. And if the contribution from the T2 spinal nerve is large and that from the C4 spinal nerve is absent, it is called postfix type of the brachial fluxus. Let's see the components of the brachial fluxus. Brachial fluxus consists of roots, trunk, divisions, cords, and branches. Let's have the view on the location of these components. Roots are situated in the neck region between scalenus anterior and scalenus medius muscle. Trunks are situated in the posterior triangle of the neck and divisions are situated behind the clavicle while the cords and the terminal branches are situated below the clavicle in the axilla. Let's see the details of the brachial fluxus. The roots of the brachial fluxus are formed from the ventral rami of C5 to T1 spinal nerves. These roots unite to form the trunks of brachial fluxus. C5, C6 roots unite to form the upper trunk. C7 root continues as middle trunk. C8, T1 roots unite to form the lower trunk. Upper, middle and lower trunks are also referred as superior, middle and inferior trunks. These trunks give rise to the divisions. Each trunk divides into the anterior and posterior division. Anterior and posterior division. Anterior divisions indicated by blue color and the posterior division by brown color. These divisions unite to form the cords of brachial fluxus. Posterior divisions of all the three trunks unite to form posterior cord of brachial fluxus. Anterior divisions of upper and the middle trunks unite to form the lateral cord of brachial fluxus. Anterior division of lower trunk continues as medial cord. These cords are labeled according to their relation to the second part of axillary artery means the cord which lies medial to the artery is medial cord, lateral to the artery is lateral cord and posterior to the artery is the posterior cord. Now coming to the branches of the brachial fluxus. Let's see the branches from the lateral cord. Mnemonic to remember the branches from the lateral cord is LML. L for lateral pectoral now. Here is lateral pectoral now. M for musculocutaneous now, musculocutaneous now. L for lateral root of median now, here is lateral root of median now. We will see the branches from the medial cord. Medial cord branches can be remembered with a mnemonic M for U, 4 times M, U. M for medial pectoral now, here is medial pectoral now. Next M for medial cutaneous nerve of arm. Next M for medial cutaneous nerve of forearm. Next M for medial root of median nerve. And U for ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve is the continuation of the medial cord. We will move to the branches from the posterior cord of brachial fluxus and the mnemonic to remember the branches. Ultra, U, L, T, R, A. U for upper subscapular now. Here is upper subscapular now. L for lower subscapular now. Here is lower subscapular now. T for thoracodorsal now, which is also called as now to latissimus dorsi. R for radial now, which is the largest branch of brachial fluxus. And A for axillary now. So these are the branches from the posterior cord of the brachial fluxus. Let's see the dissection of the brachial fluxus in axilla, that means cords and their branches, followed by viva questions.
We will see the dissection for the brachial flexes. Skin of the pectoral region is removed. Skin, superficial fascia, deep fascia when removed. Pectoralis major is exposed. This is the clavicular head of pectoralis major. This is sternocostal head of pectoralis major. When clavicular head of pectoralis major is reflected, we get clavipectoral fascia which is pierced by this is cephalic vein. This is the lateral pectoral now which pierces the clavipectoral fascia and supplies the clavicular head and the sternocostal head. One more structure we get and this is the acromiothoracic artery. This is the acromiothoracic artery immediately divides into the clavicular branch, pectoral branch going downwards, deltoid branch going towards the deltopectoral groove and acromial branch is running towards the acromion process. When pectoralis major is reflected along with the sternocostal fibers, Pectoralis minor is exposed. Pectoralis minor muscle is pierced by medial pectoral now. This muscle arises from third, fourth, fifth ribs near the costochondral junction. When the pectoralis minor is reflected, contents of the axilla along with brachial flexes are exposed. Now this is the axillary vein. This is the axillary artery. This is the axillary artery. This is axillary vein. Medial most structure in the axilla is the medial cutaneous nerve of arm. So this is the medial cutaneous nerve of arm, branch of medial cord of brachial flexes. Usually it shows the communication with the intercostobrachial nerve. So this is the intercostobrachial nerve coming from the second intercostal space. This is the medial cutaneous nerve of arm which lies medial to the axillary vein. In between the axillary artery and the axillary vein, we get there are two nerves. In between the axillary vein and axillary artery, two nerves are there. There. This is a medial cutaneous nerve of forearm and this is the ulnar nerve. When we trace the ulnar now upwards, it shows the communication with one branch going towards the median nerve. So this is the median nerve. It is formed by medial root and lateral root. And here are the branches from the medial cord of the brachial flexus. And the branches are medial pectoral nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of arm, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm, medial root of median now and ulnar now. This lateral root if trace upward, here this is the musculocutaneous now. This musculocutaneous now pierces coracobrachialis and supplies the muscle before it pierces the coracobrachialis. Here are the branches from the lateral cord of the brachial flexus which include lateral pectoral now, musculocutaneous now and lateral root of median now. That's how we get the M-shaped structure which is a form in this region. So this is the M-shaped structure. In the middle, it is a form by the median now. This is the median now. And medially, medial limb, it is continuous with the ulnar now. And laterally, this is the musculocutaneous now. Okay. After we reflect everything anteriorly, Radial nerve and axillary nerve are exposed. This is the largest branch of brachial flexus, radial nerve. Then this is the axillary nerve which winds around the surgical neck of the humerus on its posterior aspect and forms the content of the quadrangular space. Other branches from the posterior cord. Now before that we will see the muscle. This muscle is the latissimus dorsi muscle. This muscle is teres major muscle and here we get the subscapularis muscle. This subscapularis muscle is supplied by the upper subscapular now. Here is the upper subscapular now. Here is upper subscapular now. Here we get the lower subscapular now. In between upper and the lower subscapular now we get this is now to the latissimus dorsi. This now to the latissimus dorsi supplies the latissimus dorsi and this lower subscapular now supplies lower part of subscapularis in addition to that it supplies the teres major muscle. So lower subscapular now in addition to the subscapularis supplies teres major muscle. And here we get the branches from the posterior cord of the brachial flexus and the branches are upper subscapular now, lower subscapular now, now to latissimus dorsi or also called as thoracodorsal now, radial now and axillary now. Then on the lateral aspect here, this is the serratus anterior muscle and this is now to the serratus anterior or nerve of bell or the long thoracic nerve. Here, this is the medial pectoral now we have dissected and it is piercing the pectoralis minor muscle. This is the lateral pectoral now, this is the medial pectoral now and here there is a communication between lateral pectoral now and the medial pectoral now which lies anterior to the axillary artery. This is a loop of communication between medial and the lateral pectoral nerves. So in short again, so here this is the medial cutaneous nerve of arm medial to the axillary vein. 
which is usually communicated with the intercostal brachial nerve in between the axillary artery and axillary vein we get two nerves the nerve which is lying in the front is the medial cutaneous nerve of forearm behind that lies the ulnar nerve ulnar nerve when we trace upwards it is a continuous with median nerve medial root of the median nerve this is lateral root of median nerve this is the trunk of median nerve the lateral root of median now below continues here with the musculocutaneous now when all these structures are left we get the radial now the largest branch of brachial fluxus and here this is the axillary now then on the subscapularis here we get this is the upper subscapular now here we get this now this is the upper subscapular now this is the lower subscapular now which also supplies the teres major muscle this teres major muscle this is now to latissimus dorsi which enters into latissimus dorsi muscle here medial pectoral now and the lateral pectoral now shows the loop of communication so this is the loop of communication between these two nerves medial and lateral pectoral now and here this is the now to serratus anterior this is the serratus anterior taking origin from the upper eight ribs and this is now to serratus anterior or the long thoracic nerve this was the dissection of the brachial fluxus. Now we will move to the viva questions. Here I have included very commonly asked questions on this topic. Before we start the viva questions, I will like to share the very easy way to draw the diagram of the brachial fluxus. We know the components of the brachial fluxus. They are roots, trunks, divisions, cords and branches. So we will start with the roots. Roots are derived from the ventral rami of C5 to T1 spinal nerves. These roots unite to form the trunks of brachial fluxus in such a way that C5, C6 roots unite to form upper trunk, C7 root continues as middle trunk, C8, T1 roots unite to form lower trunk. So these are the roots and these are the trunks. Trunks lead to the divisions. Each trunk divides into the anterior and posterior divisions. So these are the divisions. These divisions unite to form the cords of the brachial fluxus. Posterior divisions of all the three trunks unite to form the posterior cord of brachial fluxus. Anterior divisions of upper and the middle trunks unite to form the lateral cord. And anterior division of lower trunk continues as the medial cord. So these are the cords. Last component includes branches. So branches from the lateral cord, we know the mnemonic is LML. So these are the branches from the lateral cord. From the medial cord, we get the branches with the mnemonic M4U. So these are the branches from the medial cord. And for the branches from the posterior cord, the mnemonic is ULTRA. So these are the branches from the posterior cord. I am sure now you will find this diagram interesting and very easy to draw. Now we will move to the viva questions. For all practical and the viva exams, identification of all dissected structures is must. That means one should be able to identify the muscle, the vessel or the nerve. Formation or components of brachial fluxus along with its two types that is prefix and postfix can be asked. Branches of brachial fluxus from roots, from trunks, from cords can be asked. In this video, we have seen the branches from the cords. Next question includes, what is the herb's point? Legions of the brachial fluxus can be asked. Commonly asked legions are the herb's paralysis, Klumke's paralysis along with Horner's syndrome. Now to serratus anterior can be asked for its other names and the legion. Next question includes, what is intercostal brachial now? Intercostal brachial now is the lateral cutaneous branch of second intercostal now. It is the branch of intercostal now and supplies the medial side of brachium. So the name intercostal brachial now. It has the communication with medial cutaneous nerve of arm. This was all about the brachial fluxus. I am sure you all will find it very useful and very helpful. Thank you for watching.